We begin the broadcast with a topic that stirred a lot of debate over the last uh, day or so, the return of GMO technology for food production in Kenya. And it's been met with varied reactions from both sides of the debate. While the supporters of the adoption of the technology hail it as a game changer in securing the country as far as food production goes, those in the opposition decry the health, socioeconomic and environmental impact this will likely have. Brenda Wanga examines this rekindled debate and traces the journey to the second coming of GMO foods to Kenya. The lifting of the ban on GMO foods in Kenya, a decade after it was imposed, has served to bring the debate on the place of this technology on Kenyan plates. Whether to embrace GMO technology or not has been a long-standing and emotive issue in the Kenyan scientific and health space, with both sides advancing their reasons for their stands. Well, genetically modified organism is just any organism that has been um, improved for a particular uh, function. The function can be to produce something that is beneficial or it could be to tolerate something that is harmful. So do we want to go that way as Kenyans? No. We are not ready to go that way. Uh, you'll hear the BT cotton that is, or, or BT maize that is uh, being promoted in Kenya, the Mon 18 variety, has failed in South Africa. The anti-GMO wave gained the upper hand in this back and forth in 2012 when the then Kibaki-led government banned GMO foods in Kenya on the strength of a study conducted by French scientist Eric Seralini that linked genetically modified foods to cancer. Anne Miner, an anti-GMO activist, says those findings continue to raise health concerns to date. But when they were feeding mice on the Mon 810 variety, the one that is going to be introduced in Kenya and commercialized, the rats developed tumors. And tumors, often when you get tumors, they can either be cancerous or not cancerous. Although that study has since been discredited, those opposed to the GMO technology insist that the dangers associated with the consumption of GMO products far outstrip the benefit. You're going to get a lot of crossing, even for a farmer who feels I will maintain my local variety, but there's a lot of cross pollination that might happen. At the end of the day, we'll lose our diversity. But those embracing GMOs say, although it may not be the silver bullet to Kenya's food security situation, GMO technology is a huge step in the right direction. Because we have already maize that is drought tolerant, that is here at Kenyatta University, where we have reduced its ability to lose the leaves when there is drought. And this is work that has happened here at Kenyatta University. We have cassava that we have reduced the cyanide because that is what kills geek people. Prior to Monday's lifting of the ban, the government head in 2019 allowed the commercial farming of BT cotton that is already happening in places like Busia, making it the first biotech cash crop to be planted in Kenya following years of research stretching back to 2004. Last year, the government also approved the release of GMO cassava that is resistant to brown streak disease. The crop is being cultivated in areas like Kilifi. This lift in the ban now means that modified maize resistance to maid borers will be introduced once it passes field trials. The maize will need little spraying of pesticides, greatly reducing the cost of production of the country's staple food commodity in the long run. But in the meantime, the government is now able to import cheaper GMO, whose immediate impact will be the lowering of the price of maize flour. Brenda Wanga, Citizen TV, Nairobi.